The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well uh, then, yes. Well then, Bun Rosaurus Rex, cough, cough, beginning of the bit, cough, cough. Sorry, I had something in my throat. Let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I've been a loyal, hardworking, and since I moved from California to Oklahoma, a beloved employee yeah. at my local bookstore for well over 16 years. Crazy. That is crazy. That is cray cray, which is short for crazy. Oh, wait. No. Cray cray, which is longer for crazy. Because <laughs> it's longer than crazy. Crazy is a short word, so there's no point in trying to shorten it. Yeah. But if you want to say it longer, then then you would use the cray cray. Anywho, because of my impressive retail tenure, I really do have my greasy fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to rub my greasy digits all over your face while you're sleeping. Yes. With this week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore. And it's the summer, Bunny. It is the summer. And you know, you know what that means, right? I do. Oh, no, you don't. I'm sorry. You, you've never worked at a bookstore. You have no, no idea of what a summer brings. Let me tell you what the summer it, yeah. brings. Let me tell you what the summer brings to your local bookstore. Teens, Bunny. Teens. <laughs> Teens, as far as the eye can see, smart asses the lot of them. Every aisle just littered with smart ass teens acting too good, too, too cool to be at their local bookstore, but still being at the local bookstore. Like there's a fog of irony that covers the entire area of your local bookstore. It's difficult to breathe. Through all of the irony and eye rollings that come from all the teens that litter, that litter your local bookstore during the summer, like like a like a airplane full of uh, soccer people that just crashed into a mountain in the Andes. <laughs> like you would think that an airplane full of teens crashed into your local bookstore. That's how many teens are covering the place during the summer. And I know what you are thinking, Bunny. You are thinking, Hey, Steve. Just last week, you were complaining about how studies have shown that the average customer for our local for our bookstore is a cranky menopausal 69 year old grandmother from Boise with hip dysplasia and bad eyesight who wants to speak to the manager. Yes, indeed, I do so, remember that. Yes, so why, Steve, are you now complaining about the store being full of teens? And to that, I say, oh. Oh, you poor doomed child. Teens don't <laughs> buy stuff. Teens don't go to a bookstore because they're looking for books. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. Oh, not uh. No, teens, especially, especially the dreaded summer teens. Yeah. They're just looking for a place to loiter. They're looking for a place to mess stuff up. They're looking for a place to put things in the wrong spot, a place where a place teens during the summer are looking for a place where they can go and feel better about themselves by finding low wage workers to make fun of. And we are chock full of that. Yeah. What's the matter with them? They can't figure out how to sneak into a barn like the rest of us at that age. No, no, no. They just loiter the place up. They make snide remarks. They leave messes. They sit everywhere, Bunny. Any place is a place where a teen can sit. And and I do wonder about something. Do you ever have a teen ask for ask you about a specific book and see kind of in their eyes they're really embarrassed to be asking about it? Um, most of the time it's because it's a book that they have to read for summer, but right now people aren't asking for those books because it's the beginning of summer. It's usually like a week before the end of summer where we get these, this giant influx of people 
barging into the store. Uh, yeah. Do you have any copies of, uh, oh, hold on. I wrote it down here. Oh, here it is. At last Sharugid. <laughs> Do you have at last Sharugid? <laughs> yeah, we have at last Sharugid. Let me show you where it is. Oh, yeah. I had to read it for summer, so I only have like a week. Like, okay, well, Ayn Rand doesn't write massive books, so this should be an easy one for you. It's a beach read. <laughs> but yeah, teens will sit anywhere, bunny. A wall. So Boom, it, that's but, a seat for a teen. A stack of bargain books. Boom, that's a seat for a teen. The floor. There are wild packs, bunny. Gaggles of teens oh. down every. Basically, that sounds walking dangerous. Back, walking down. Any aisle at your local bookstore during the summer becomes like a bad 80s video game. Yeah. Where it's like, you, customer, try and get from the door of the bookstore to the bathroom. Watch out for the teens <laughs> and snakes, because it's an 80s video game. So it's not just the teens you have to avoid, but also the snakes. Well, would there be a whole teen level? Yeah. 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 And then finally, like, you get to the end of the level. And that's when you have to beat the king team, which is actually eight teams tied together to make <laughs> one king team. Teens are crazy rude. Teens are crazy rude. And I know that this makes me sound wildly old, but it is what it is. Teens are rude. And the worst part about this, the absolute worst part about this is, and this might come as a shock to you, Bunny, but I just want to be honest here. I was one of those a-hole teens ah. was man me uh tomas joey jamie sarah we would just go to the local bookstore leave these big messes and these massive piles and we just walk away we never put our stuff away we never cared about the mess we made i even remember once saying to sarah that leaving messes for the employees i was a teen at the time so teens Teens don't have the proper um, rational thinking sometimes. Yes. I remember saying that by leaving a mess for the employees to clean up, I was giving them something to do. So in a way, I was helping the employees with their job security. True. True. Yeah. It was a dick move. But now here I am. I'm in my early 40s or 39 and holding, which is what they say on TV. Yeah. And I'm working at my local bookstore. So when a group of a-hole teens leave a massive pile of 37 manga books and make fun of me as they giggle away, I know it's really up. I know it's really up. <laughs> Karma's a bitch. That's what it is. Karma's a bitch. It's we... payback. Every rude customer I've ever dealt with is just paying me back for my sins. We, we had friendlies. We had friendlies. We would hang out in friendlies. Welcome friendlies. friendlies. Everyone's your friend. The the friendlies by me, uh, the employees were mostly women of like a a post cougar age. Yeah. Okay. Um. And we would go in, and we would maybe order a little something here and there, uh, but get the unlimited cups of coffee, and we would sit there for yeah. for hours. Yeah, for hours. Was... Every now and then, the manager would try to throw us out, but the manager was like, you know, it was it was one of those places where all of the employees have been there longer than any manager, and it was yeah. almost always a different manager, you know. Yeah. But since they still had like those kind of maternal instincts, they were like, "Oh, leave them alone." They're yeah, kids. They're was... drinking coffee. They're not getting into any trouble. You know? <laughs> yeah, they could be was, out there drinking. Basically... Yeah, that was basically <laughs> Debbie and Denny's. Yeah. Like, she would be like, hey, let's go to Denny's. And I'd be like, okay, you know it's three in the morning, but okay, sure, whatever. And then, you know, we're driving to Denny's at three in the morning, and I'm going, oh, this is going to be stupid. There's going to be nobody there. We're just gonna mm -hmm. what drink a coffee and leave. This is gonna be stupid. And of course, it doesn't didn't matter. It could be like a like a Tuesday morning at four a.m. There's like six people she knows there. Yeah, but and I'm sorry. This just she knew. this this just reminded me of this though, because you brought that yeah. up. 
Sarah Silverman. Sarah uh, Silverman Sarah. is the hottest Denny's waitress. Oh God, I love Sarah Silverman. But yes. but now you know, she's but like exactly like Denny's. she's famous, so she's like national, you know. Yeah. You know, not that one specific Denny's, but that's her look. Yeah, yeah, that, she's, that is a, a a good yeah. That's a good description of Sarah Silverman. Yeah. Also, also, Bunny, I'm pretty sure you don't need to censor any of the things I've said so far. I'm pretty sure it's okay. I think we've both been good. Like, no, but I've said, like, I've said, like, bitch, but is bitch even a bad word anymore? You know, I don't think it is. I, 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 think, I think there's currently a battle over the bitch. Yeah. You know? Like I think I've said I think I've I think I may have said asshole, but no, I've said asshole. Assholes a lot of them. But I'm not even sure if that's like as bad as it used to be. I'm not saying MF or anything like that. So I'm pretty no. sure that we're good clean wise. I'm pretty sure we're good. I, I think I think we're good. Yeah. I've been putting But in I that digress. Effort. But I digress all the time, constantly. It's kind of my thing. Let's get back to books. Your local bookstore would like you to know that it is fully stocked with all of the biggest, hottest books that people want this summer. We have the title, Book You Didn't Care About Until It Became a Hulu Show by Mm -hmm. Margaret Atwood. We have that in stock. We have Orange is the New Get Off Your High Horse. You didn't even know this was a book. (laughs) I fight for something or other. It's a nonfiction book. Mm -hmm. And of course... We have the hit teen book, 15 Reasons Why Teen Suicide is, like, totally awesome. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that's that. really good. Get that. Yeah. We also have the book, The Man in the Come On, What Are You? You Are Kidding Yourself. Ain't No Way You're Actually Going to Read This by Philip K. Penis. <laughs> Plus... Plus, we just got in a huge shipment of both book you only know about because it's a movie now and book you only know about because Oprah. Wow. Who says reading is dead? Yeah. Yeah. It's alive and well as long as another more important bit of media mentions it. What? What's that new one? It's something about a school shooting. Oh, yeah. I, um, like, it can't happen here or it shouldn't happen here and it's got like a like a picture of chalk, chalk and it's yeah, being shot right. at yeah yeah or it it what's this i i haven't read it but i know of its existence we sell it a lot we have it at work yeah it's about a school shooting yeah it, it's in the teen section yeah it's supposed to be is it a how to yeah yeah it, it i'm hoping yeah, there's this there's this teen book and it's really popular and I forget what the title is, but it's got chalk and it's being shot and it's it's about a school shooting. There, I'm hoping that the popularity of teen books of books about school shootings will lead Stephen King to finally release the one book he wrote that he said would never get published again. Uh, one of his early books was called Rage, yeah. and it was about a kid who slowly went nuts and held his school hostage with a gun and started killing people. And like, it, and then it went out of print, and he said, yeah, that's never getting published again. This is, this is how it ends. That's it. That's it. That's the name of the book. This is how it ends. Yeah. Uh. yeah but, but Stephen King said, yeah, yeah. It, it, now in American society, yeah, this one book I wrote, yeah, you're never going to find it again. They're never going to release this. But I'm hoping that with books like that, with This Is How It Ends, that maybe Stephen King will have, like, the intestinal fortitude to re-release this book. Because I had read it a long time ago, and it's pretty good. And he yeah. very, with, with his main, with his main Yankee sensibilities, he very may, may well get to the point where he, he's just like, you know what, what the hell? Yeah. What what difference yeah. does it make anymore? <laughs> and also, Stephen King was so ahead of his time in the seventies to go. You know what? I'm going to write a book about a teen shooting up a school. Wow. I I, I do have a That's... I do have a Stephen King related question. 
Okay. Um, because now I am an older Stephen King reader in more ways than one. Specifically for this, I'm referring to his uh his earlier works, his older works. Uh, and yeah. as a Stephen King reader of that time, and it was already changing as you followed along with his books, but he had certain tropes that were specifically very Stephen Kingish. Yeah. Okay, Stephen King. You always had some type of insane Christian lady. Yeah, that was a big theme of of his. Very many books about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. He he would almost always have a scene somewhere in the book of somebody peeing themselves. Now yeah. that yeah. later morphed into vomit for some strange reason. Yeah. yeah, Cujo had some pee in it. And and bring up characters from his other books. These these are some of the big like like he he's one of the first people I know who created a universe in yeah. book form. Yeah, you know Stephen yeah. King definitely had his own universe. Um, Absolutely. So so do you know of any current Stephen now that now that he is a much older man? Are there any new trends that we're looking out for? Has peeing yourself? come back as well he pees but, himself it's now more relatable for oh, him you mean like in stephen king's new books i'm sorry you mean like trends in stephen king's newer books yes current trends of stephen king not that i can tell because the only real new book of his that i read was 11 63 oh. that was the last book of his i read Read. I never read uh, Under the Dome, and yeah. all the other books just seem like, eh, yeah, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Uh, uh, Under the Dome just sounded like need, needful things to me, on a lot of yeah. levels, and then I, I watched some of the show, and it was even worse. Yeah, I liked Under the Dome when they made that movie that had, uh, oh, what were they called? Oh, yeah, The Simpsons. Mm. I liked Under the Dome when The Simpsons came up with it first. So I didn't feel the need to have to read Stephen King turn a Simpsons movie into like a 1,000 page book. I liked it better when, when it was Dahlgren. Yeah. But speaking of Speaking of trends in books, Bunny. Yes. I am proud, proud to say that, that I most definitely have an idea for a new book that is 100% guaranteed to net me a cool million dollars. Nice. This is another this is another one of my gold ideas, okay? okay. See, there is a trend. There is a trend that has slowly but surely been popping up in the high-class literary world, it's a trend that most likely no one has noticed unless they're just balls deep in the book world like I am. Yeah. So I've got a list here. I'm going to read you this list. It's a list of very popular and uh, good-selling book titles that have been published recently. Okay. Uh, popular sociology sociology books that have come out within the last couple of years. I'm going to read you this list. They're all, they all sell really well. These are good selling books. I'm going to read this list to you, Bunny. These are all real titles that have come out and let's see, let's try and see if you can see a pattern in these titles, okay? Okay. Okay. Here's a book by Joan Williams. It's called White Working Class. Overcoming class cluelessness in America. That came out. <laughs> oh. That came out last month. It's already selling really well. Here is a history book by Nancy Eisenberg that came out uh, last year. It's called actual title: White Trash: The Four Hundred Year Untold History of Class in America. 
<laughs> Here's a book that came out uh, just two months ago. It's called Janesville, an American Story. It's by Amy Goldstein, and it is the true story of a small factory town in America. But when the factory closed down, that city was hit with a recession, and it struggled to continue on this white working class small town in mid-America. Here's another book uh, that came out uh, actually a few years ago. It's by Charles Murray, and it's called Coming Apart, The State of White America. <laughs> and here is a book that it, it it's half sociology book, half uh, autobiography. It sold like gangbusters. It just exploded. It came out uh, summer of last year. It came out a year ago, and people just went nuts over it. It's called, <laughs> it's by J.D. Vance, and it's called Hillbilly Elegy, a memoir right. of a family and a culture in crisis. Do these books sell well? They do. They sell really well. So you obviously see the pattern here. There is a rising genre in the literary world, and that genre is a new one. It doesn't have a name yet, but I have a couple of names for it. Fuck why? Um, Sorry. You can call it. You can call it the boohoo white people genre. Yeah. You can. Call the oh no whites won't be the major race soon genre or as i like to call it poor white folk books they're very popular they sell very well and the way i see it yeah where i find myself living these days which is the beautiful scenic and utterly depressing downtown nowhere oklahoma that means that i am uniquely qualified to write the next great pity white people sociology book all right. So, um, I've got five titles of my upcoming book. Working okay. titles. Working titles, and I'm going to bounce them off you. You tell me uh, if they're good or not, okay? Okay. I'm, so, I'm ready. So, Hit me. Okay. So here's the first one. It's more of a serious title. Nowhere, Oklahoma. White culture in crisis. I like that. Okay, here's here's another one. I I um, I, I, I it, it makes me want to Google the clan. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here's another one. Uh, goodbye, white America. An inside look at a disappearing race. <laughs> yes. Big yes. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. I think it's direct. Yeah. Uh huh. It it um, hits the here, it pulls no punches is what it does. Yeah, yeah. This one is very uh, direct. Uh, the disappearance of white middle class in America. You know, very very direct, specific, goes right at you. You know. Yes. Yeah. Now the next two are a bit sillier, but well, still, but you know, I think the, but, they, but, but that one, that one. That one may confuse them because they may interpret yeah. that as getting rid of grades seven, eight, and nine. That's a good point. That's a good point. You know? Yeah. But the, the middle next classes. Two, yeah. The next two titles, the last two titles, are a, a, a bit more in your face. Okay. Titles. But I still think that they'll sell really well. Uh, number one, white people go boom. White people go boom. Okay. White people go boom. It's all about white people, and then they go boom. You know? Um, it's very... What is the cover? Do you have any conceptual cover art for that? Um, it's America exploding and a bunch of white Christians are flying and they, they kind of have their hands on their faces like uh, the scream, just, oh, you know, like uh, Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. Yeah. They can't believe that they've just exploded. Yeah. That's, that's mm-hmm. just the first idea that pops up in my head. Now, I think this next title is the winner. I really do think that this is this, this is the good title for... Mm-hmm. 
for the next great pity the white man sociology book. Uh, I I want to call it na 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 hey 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 goodbye whitey. <laughs> I think that was the winner, right? I I think that's a winner. I think that's a winner. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, I'm gonna start work on it immediately. Uh, uh, any any runners uh, up? Because no, I because no, I so far because I think I I think all black people want to kill you may be a major hit. Yeah, especially here in Oklahoma. Yeah, but I I'm pretty sure the book's gonna write itself. I mean, nowhere Oklahoma was a booming town. Then the recession came. I mean, boop, that's chapter one. That's chapter one. I didn't even break a sweat, you know? Mm-hmm. This, this, sort of, this sort of thing just writes itself. I'm going to be a millionaire. It, it's, and, it's poetic um, yeah. without very many big words. Yeah, yeah, that's what people are looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hillbilly elegy. <laughs> Hilarious. And that is it from Notes from the bookstore this week and remember you too can save 10 percent on all of your purchases and all you have to do all you have to do is get any kardashian to say on camera i am not at all important <laughs> all you have to do do that and we send you coupons straight to your spam folder boom yes but 